we hear a lot from our constituents on different issues. But something I've heard that doesn't seem to be being covered are the Epstein files. On Capitol Hill, Democrat Ted Lieu went there, highlighting previously secret grand jury evidence connecting Donald Trump to Jeffrey Epstein. These files were released, and like Donald Trump sort of all over this, right? There are pictures of him with Jeffrey Epstein. He's taken multiple plane flights with Epstein with young girls on board. Uh, he is in call logs with Epstein. One of the highest trending hashtags on t Twitter right now is about Trump and Epstein. I'm not going to repeat the hashtag because we're in a dignified setting. The hashtag is Trump pedophiles. Many of the posts screen grab documents from a lawsuit that accused Trump of raping a 13-year-old girl. But yeah, y'all might want to look at that because that's highly disturbing. And again, it shows that Donald Trump is unfit for office. And by the way, he was convicted in a civilian court for sexual assault, convicted in a separate court of 34 felonies. Donald Trump should drop out of the race. Most congressional lawmakers and members of the mainstream media have been unwilling to bring up the Trump-Epstein documents. Trump has denied the rape allegations. Katie Johnson dropped the lawsuit just before the 2016 election. And the mere mention of the accusations are reportedly so enraging to Trump that Trump associates say anybody who brings them up will face unprecedented revenge if Trump wins the presidency. But the fear of retribution has not stopped a growing number of internet sleuths from piecing together the Trump-Epstein connections. They lived within walking distance of each other in Manhattan. They partied together. Trump flew on Epstein's planes. Epstein buys a house literally within walking distance. Shorter than the distance I walked to school as a kid from Trump. How many kids... Not even women. How many kids do you think, and I want you to put it in the comments, Trump and Epstein raped? All of you MAGA Christians, go Google Trump and Katie Johnson. The original assault occurred in 1994. You've got to read a little bit about it. The Johnson lawsuit, item 12, reads this way. On the fourth and final encounter with defendant Donald J. Trump, the plaintiff, Katie Johnson, was tied to a bed by defendant Trump, who then proceeded to forcibly rape plaintiff Johnson. During the course of this savage sexual attack, plaintiff Johnson loudly pleaded with defendant Trump to please wear a condom. Defendant Trump responded by violently striking plaintiff Johnson in the face with his open hand and screaming that he would do whatever he wanted as he refused to wear protection. After achieving sexual orgasm, the defendant, Donald J. Trump, put his suit back on, and when the plaintiff, Katie Johnson, in tears, asked defendant Trump what would happen if he had impregnated her, defendant Trump grabbed his wallet and threw some money at her and screamed that she should use the money to get a f***ing abortion. Mm. Again, Katie Johnson dismissed her lawsuit in 2016 without providing an explanation. But one of her attorneys, Lisa Bloom, said Johnson had received threats and was afraid. As for Donald Trump, his lawyer in this matter at the time, Alan Garten, dismissed the allegations as categorically untrue, saying the lawsuit was completely frivolous and baseless. The lawsuit documents are separate from the Jeffrey Epstein grand jury materials released in Florida, but the focus on the Trump-Epstein contacts and connections have caused a lot of people to take a closer look at the Katie Johnson accusations. Also, Donald Trump is already an adjudicated rapist, as determined by the court in the E. Jean Carroll civil lawsuit. So for anybody looking at Donald Trump's personal character and alleged lack of basic morality, there is plenty to talk about. In the meantime, Democrats and anti-Trump Republicans trying to defeat Trump's presidential campaign are also highlighting some exceptionally controversial potential Trump policy initiatives. Project 2025 is all about ending our democracy and making the president a king and a dictator. If you read all of it, Sarah, it's all about strengthening the president, giving the president control, the complete control over the Justice Department and the FBI, most every aspect of the executive branch. The anti-Trump Lincoln Project just published a video previewing what a Trump presidency with the Project 2025 proposals might entail. Trump replaces over 50,000 civil servants with hardline MAGA loyalists. The federal oath of office now requires declaring loyalty to the president, not the Constitution. Protected by the Supreme Court's grant of total immunity for official acts, Donald Trump orders the Department of Justice to arrest members of the January 6th Commission, current and former DOJ employees, 
and political opponents for treason, election interference, and conspiracy. He declares it to be an official act. Trump ends birthright citizenship by executive order and turns millions of American-born citizens into illegal aliens overnight. Mass deportations begin. Hundreds of thousands, including legal U.S. residents and American citizens, are imprisoned in newly built camps. Protests erupt. Trump addresses the nation from the Oval Office, invoking the Insurrection Act and declaring the protesters a danger to American sovereignty. He orders the National Guard to use deadly force to suppress the protests. In the wake of the bloody violence, Trump declares nationwide martial law, awarding himself new powers under the freshly signed American Sovereignty Protection Order, which defines protests of immigration policies as non-protected speech and a threat to national security. Governors in New York, California, Illinois, and elsewhere declare their opposition, promising to refuse compliance in their states. Trump orders their arrests. Trump pardons every January 6th attacker, including those who assaulted the police, and in a White House ceremony issues a new presidential medal honoring them. Many are given jobs in his administration. You get the picture. Donald Trump has distanced himself from Project 2025, saying he is not involved and does not support the Heritage Foundation plans. But Trump has lied and denied a lot of things through the years. Amidst all of this, Trump is now back on the campaign trail. And in a recent rally in Florida, Trump spoke about foreign policy and said he didn't know much about the North Atlantic Treaty Organization Alliance, or NATO, until Trump became president. I didn't even know what the hell NATO was too much before, but it didn't take me long to figure it out, like about two minutes. <laughs> and the first thing I figured out was they weren't paying. We were paying. We were paying almost fully for NATO. Putting aside the debate over who funds NATO, most students in America, in order to pass eighth grade U.S. history, have to learn what NATO is. Now, perhaps Donald Trump forgot or suffered amnesia while working for many years as a real estate mogul. Still, his admission about his lack of knowledge is stunning. In the same speech, Donald Trump spoke about his priorities if elected again, including airports. We are a nation whose once revered airports are a dirty, crowded mess. You sit and wait for hours and then are notified that the plane won't leave, that they have no idea when they will, where ticket prices have tripled, they don't have the pilots to fly the planes, they don't see qualified air traffic controllers, and they just don't know what the hell they are doing. So Donald Trump intends to fix some of America's airports. It's a pledge that makes Trump sound like a normal sort of campaign politician. But Democrats and anti-Trump Republicans keep pointing out that Donald Trump is not normal. They allege he is a rapist who wants to be a tyrannical dictator and is willing to torch America's democracy. And thanks to the Epstein documents and Project 2025, some Democrats are now speaking out more loudly than ever, saying Donald Trump is despicable and one of America's greatest threats. By the way, Donald Trump recently got torched in epic fashion by a church pastor who was hosting President Biden. We need to be here because the Bible says, pray for them that are in authority. This president doesn't sell Bibles, he actually reads the Bible. Mm, check out that video at the link below. It generated a lot of comments on YouTube. One of the most popular is from Trauma Queen 65 who wrote, When fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. I agree. I look forward to reading your comments about Donald Trump getting hammered over his Jeffrey Epstein connections as more lurid details emerge. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.